much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to all the nominees. I think I'll start with you, Mr. Polite, down there. Um, you were appointed by a Republican Louisiana governor to serve on the Louisiana Civil Service Commission and currently have the support of Louisiana's Republican Attorney General, who praised you for being not only an effective crime fighter, but also an invaluable member of the community. Uh, in your view, how have you earned that support? And um, how do you work together? I always think of prosecutors when I have my old job as ministers of justice, uh, that you have to, of course, focus on community safety and convicting the guilty, but also protecting the innocent, which to me also involves things like uh, conviction, integrity units, drug courts, um, and the like. So if you want to briefly respond. Senator, thank you so much for that question. And uh, my view is very similar to what you articulated, Senator, uh, that my role as a U.S. attorney, while certainly fo focused on issues of enforcement, was much broader than that. It was to be a community problem solver. And so to utilize all of the tools at our disposal, not just enforcement, but tools such as prevention and intervention and even reentry particularly in a state like Louisiana where incarceration rates were so high, uh, all of those tools were critical to our work and it required outreach to many different components within our communities across state, local, and federal law enforcement, but also outside of government to actually achieve those goals. Very good, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chipman, it's not lost on me that as we're having this discussion with you or several members are about guns that there is another mass shooting with fatalities uh, near San Jose. Um, we have worked hard. There are Republicans uh, like Senator Toomey that have worked on uh, the background check issue and tried to get that done. We know the vast majority of Americans uh, support um, rational uh, gun violence legislation. Um, and a piece of this is uh, for many years I've led the legislation to close a dangerous loophole in the law that allows domestic abusers to buy a gun um, simply because they're not married to their victims. Uh, this bill actually was included in the Violence Against Women Act over in the House and got a number of Republicans voting for it. Um, and uh, it's something that I think we can advance. Um, could you comment about that? Do you agree that we should keep uh, guns out of the hands of all uh, convicted domestic abusers? Thank you, uh, Senator, uh, for this question. And thank you for your dedication to um, domestic violence, which remains the most dangerous call police will ever respond to. Uh, as an ATF agent in Central Texas, uh, one of the most significant cases I worked was a pipe bomb sent by an estranged uh, boyfriend to um, a woman who worked at a probation and parole office. So. Um, domestic violence uh, is something that ATF agents uh, regularly um, deal with on the job, and there's no greater threat than those um, offenders who have access to a gun. Uh, so it would be one of the top priorities I had if I am confirmed as ATF director. Very good. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, Ms. Milgram, I enjoyed our discussion, and um, we talked about opioids, something that have been working on for quite a while. Uh, with a number of uh, Republicans on this committee as well as Democrats. Um, what do you see DA, DEA's role? We talked about um, the documents uh, from a recent trial showing drug manufacturers mocking what they called pillbillies in West Virginia. I do suggest, I know there's shared belief on this issue, but this mocking of the Beverly Hillbillies song uh, where drug executives were actually put in words uh, mocking the people they got hooked on the drugs uh, was an outrageous thing I'd never seen until last week. And it just shows um, um, how heartless this addiction was, where people were profiting off of people's own addictions, um, many times resulting in death. Could you quickly address what the DAA you see as the priorities? Senator, I... I I share your concern on this issue. America is in the, is in the midst of an opioid crisis, um, and fentanyl, which has now come to our cities and streets, uh, is really fueling this addiction opioid crisis today. Um, but, but I share your concern that there are two pieces of it. First, it's the pharmaceutical companies and the manufacturers and others that have um, essentially uh, put us in a situation today where we must regulate 
opioids um, and the, the prescription drugs that people are being given. So there's a, a huge function in, in the DEA's diversion work that is, that is a part of that, and it will be a priority for me. The other piece is really stopping the illicit fentanyl from coming into our country, where individuals who, most of whom first become hooked through prescription drugs, are then turning to heroin, to illicit fentanyl, and to other substances. And we're seeing just way too many overdose deaths in our country. Okay, thank you. Um, last, Ms. Jadu, I really enjoyed our conversation as well. We talked about the fact that uh, for so many of us in our states where we have uh, needs for immigrant workers, uh, permanent workers, uh, temporary workers, and the like. This is a becoming a near crisis, uh, especially in northern Minnesota, in our tourism industry, um, in some of our uh, farmlands um, and others. We also rely on all levels of, uh, of education uh, from uh, immigrants that are part of our economy. And one of those is in medical. And yesterday, Senator Collins, Rosen, Ernst, and I uh, led, uh, introduced a bipartisan bill that I've long been leading. I took it over from Senator Conrad when he left the Conrad State 30 and Physician Access Act, which increases the number of international doctors trained in the U.S. to remain in the country if they practice in rural or underserved areas. I, I remind people that more than 25 percent of our U.S. Nobel laureates were born abroad, and 70 of America's Fortune 500 companies were started by people born in other countries. How can U.S. CIS help to ensure we are attracting uh, talent to come to our country at all levels um, and work with us on this really a crisis of not having enough doctors in underserved areas? One of the reasons you see Senator Collins and Senator Ernst join me in this bill. Thank you, Senator. I really appreciated the time talking with you yesterday and when we talked about this issue. Um, as you know, I worked on it um, when I was a Hill staffer back in the day on the House side, and, and I, I completely appreciate and understand this issue. And um, a family member, my father-in-law, came through a program, a little different, but somewhat similar, to assist in the U.S. Navy. So um, I can personally appreciate the program. Professionally from, the, from USCIS, what we can do is to ensure that the processing of the applications surrounding that is not something that is slowing down the process, that we are doing it efficiently, efficiently and in an accessible manner, and of course, to ensure the integrity and security of the system. Excellent. Thank, thank you all thank you. for your pointed and brief answer so I could get all my questions in. I appreciate it. And the patience of your chairman. The patience of our chairman. Yes. Senator Hawley. 